So this is something that's been churning in the back of my mind for the last couple of weeks. I've been playing more and more Overwatch and have therefore sometimes been forced to deal with the less wonderful part of any gaming communities. The assholes. The sore losers. The screamers. The guy who just can't fathom why Sinyata's healing orb isn't enough to justify diving an entire five-man group of players. I'm going to start out by making a very general statement. Yes, all gaming communities have toxic players. There is no lack for imperial evidence of harassment during online play. Go search most toxic player on YouTube and find a ton of videos all claiming to contain the most toxic player on the internet. The website fatuglyorslutty.com specializes specifically in harassment of women on their Microsoft Xbox and Sony PlayStation platforms. We're at the point where there's no longer just a case of anecdotal evidence. If you for some reason think the idea of toxicity in gaming communities are overblown, you simply haven't been paying attention. That's the long and short of it. So what do we do about this shit? Truth be told, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Archiving their bullshit clearly doesn't work. Some of these people may be players who legitimately feel they're one person against the world, and showcasing them like this might just make them increase their shitty behavior even further as it's now a them and us situation. Suspending players will sometimes just make them buy or pirate a new copy of your game. In Overwatch, they tried making the mocking phrase GG easy into sentences that instead mock the person writing it. The only effect it had was turning those phrases into code for Yeah, I beat you and you fucking suck. Simply replacing what GG easy meant before. As sad as it is, seeming solutions like this will just be turned on its head for even more mockery most of the time. So should we just not have communication at all? Nintendo seems to think that's the solution. As in Mario Kart, you're only allowed to pick from a pool of pre-written phrases. But online communities can be great. Online communities are where game-specific memes or terms originate. Ever heard of a frag steal? Okay, so maybe it didn't start in gaming. Actually, it originated in the US military and referred to fragmentation grenades. To frag, verb, meant to deliberately kill an unpopular officer with said grenade. As grim as that is, in gaming it originated in Quake community, when a teammate would get the final hit in on an enemy you had been hurting a lot. You'd accuse him of stealing your frag. Frag stealing? Oh, well, today, kill stealing. Ah oh, yeah, there was a bit of a tangent, but I just thought I'd flex my massive history biceps. Seriously though, I've had some great conversations with other random players in multiplayer voice chat. There's some nice people out there. However, a lot of people never get to experience that, because the toxicity, especially in certain games, has been so notorious that friends of mine have told me they don't even bother to attempt a communication anymore. And yes, a lot of those friends are chased off because they're women. Again, fat, ugly, or slutty that come contains numerous imperial evidence for bullshit targeted towards women. Not that we guys don't see bullshit as well. There's a difference between just calling me a fat idiot and attacking someone specifically for something they can't do something about because they were born that way. Now here's the weird part. Some people actually consider shit talking to be a legitimate strategy. They liken it to poker and poker faces. So in a game like League of Legends, they might start writing stupid shit in the all chat viewable by both teams. The idea is to get the other side riled up and hot-headed so they mess up. Most of the time though, the stupid idiot trying to rile up the other team in chat gets so busy writing he basically becomes a peg leg. Instead of the other team losing, your team will probably lose because you lack the guy trying to be a fucking keyboard commander. Speaking of commanding, competitive matches, there's uh, also often that guy who thinks he's a master strategist and if you just do exactly as he says, you're on your way to the top 500 players in the world in no time. Here's the thing, I'm a pretty accommodating player. I mean healers and tanks, because I know most people want to be the big hero storming the gates, racking up the score and being the great master. I am a support player through and through, however it gets a little tiresome listening to Sun Tzu over here barking orders from across the map, usually far away from the objective of the game. We get it, you saw this really cool play in a tournament once, but if you were actually here, you'd see the payload isn't moving because the most effective damage dealer, you, is practicing your 360 no-scope at the enemy spawn point. A good personal score means jack shit if the enemy team gets the victory screen. A different problem altogether is probably not seen that often for you American folks, so bear with me a second. People refusing to communicate in anything but their native language. 
Look, I'm Danish. I have dyslexic friends. I get having trouble with speaking a second language. Look at all the most international language just is and probably will continue to be English. As annoying as you can find it, the global amplification didn't start yesterday. This is especially a problem in a game like Counter-Strike Global Offensive. In that game, it's become a pretty common occurrence to be matched up as a solo player with four friends who only speak their own language to each other. As soon as they notice you're speaking English at them, they might decide to either ignore you or, has become the meme, vote kick you. Simply put, if you're a French player matched up on the same team as four Romanians, they might kick you from the game by public vote for the heinous crime of not speaking their particular language. This wouldn't be a problem if getting kicked multiple times from a game couldn't cost you a timed ban. If you're particularly unlucky, you might get locked out of playing a game you bought and paid for just for not being able to speak every language in Europe. I'm starting to see why Alexander the Great wanted one single culture to be spread throughout the entire region, because at least then he wouldn't be ki kicked from solo queue for only speaking Greek. Now let me reiterate a former point for a second. I don't consider suspending these people from games the optimal solution to this problem. Unless it's a free-to-play model, these are paying customers, and like it or not, they deserve to use the product they bought and paid for legally. So what then? Are we just fucked? Particularly the solution I've heard of is placing these people in a low priority queue. If a player is showing repeat problematic behavior and being reported by other players over and over again, perhaps we could put them in a queue that makes them wait longer for a new game to start. Perhaps even only match them with other players that have shown similar behavior. Give them their own little echo chamber to be nasty in. Unless, of course, that's something they would like. Hey, hey, I'm gonna get rid of all the stupid SJWs for my game. Hey, what's the problem then, eh? Blah, 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 blah. Maybe we can make them level slower. So, if they repeatedly get kicked from games, they might be a little slower and get a little bit of detriment to their XP. But again, if the report system is abused, this can happen to pretty much normal people who just had a bad day. That's all well and good for the game designers who are likely not in my audience. What can we as players even do against this? Are we just kind of forced to wait for the game designers in the sky to bring up some sort of salvation? Well, I think it's very important to keep in mind what you do when you're online. Always remember there's a mute button. You can mute yourself or you can mute others. And by that I mean Maybe take a breather if you're really getting way too much into that one game. And by breather, I don't mean going away for several hours. I mean take a minute to surf the web or listen to some music. Whatever you have to do to calm down for that game that really put you on edge. So don't explode at the first mistake your teammates make in the next game. Remember, freedom of speech is a courtesy on the internet. It's not a right. It's not something you automatically have. The report button is there because the company that owns the platform has decided against total freedom of speech on the platform. Never assume you have freedom of speech in a video game. In the end, it's ultimately up to you whether you want to do something about this problem. If you see someone being chewed out unfairly, maybe jump in to defend them. Talk to your friends about it. Spread my gospel. I mean, ah. Be nice and have a nice day. That's sort of it. Treat others how you want to be treated, you wonderful fuck nuggets, and I'll see you in a different video. Thanks for watching.